Let's say you are using an array to track data, and at times you need to clear out that array. Well, what is the best way to do that and why? That is what we will be looking at in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you feel like you'd like to support this channel, there's a link in there for that as well. Now, there are multiple ways to clear out an array. And when I say clear out, I mean taking an array and removing all of its value. So it's an empty array again. So let's first look at the different ways this can be done. And then we'll talk about the best way. But more importantly, why one technique is better than another. And some of that has to do with performance, but not all of it. So let me jump to Sublime. We'll start looking at those different ways. All right, I have a simple array set up. I'm just logging it to the console and then logging it to the console again. In between is where I'll put the code that will clear out the array, create an empty array out of it. Now, the first two methods that we're going to look at, they are using loops and basically using a loop to loop over the array and pop off the value or shift the value. So those two methods of array pop and shift are two that we would use. I'm just going to paste those both in. We'll do one at a time. But let me just show them to you both right now. So we're using a while loop that works best for this type of thing because basically we go through the loop until the length is no longer greater than zero. And we pop off a value or we shift a value. Now pop is going to be faster than shift because it's popping it from the end of the array. And when that happens, it doesn't have to adjust the array. It doesn't have to change the index of everything else that's left. But shift has to do that. Shift will take from here and then it has to readjust the index for all of the values left in the array. Now, both of these work great. We'll take a look at pop first. And we can see that if we display the console, that we're able to create an empty array down here. And the same thing would, of course, happen with shift. It's just doing it a different way, popping off from the start of the array as opposed to the end of the array. And we get an empty array there as well. So those two techniques use a loop. Then we can also use a splice method. Now, if you're not familiar with the splice method of arrays, I do have a tutorial on that and I'll link to it. But basically, splice is a Swiss army knife tool for arrays. You can remove elements, you can add elements, you can do both at the same time. As a result, splice is not easily understood because it does multiple things instead of just a single task. But basically what we're going to do is use splice to remove elements from zero, so the start, to the length of the array, which would be the end of it. So basically that will remove all of the elements. Save that. And as you can see, that works great. Now, these first three methods that we've looked at, these methods are slower than the next two we're going to look at. And I'm referring to a benchmark, a JavaScript benchmark that was done and has been published in a number of different places that just show basically these five methods and how they perform. And these three methods up above are the slowest. Shift is the slowest of all, then the pop method, then using splice. But the next two methods are quite fast. One is simply redeclaring the array to an empty array like this. That is the fastest method. The other way is setting the length of the array to zero, like this. That will clear out the array as well. Both of these work. This one's the fastest one. But this one has another issue we need to talk about. So let me comment out this one and then we'll talk about redeclaring the array to an empty array. So let's say in your code, you're simply working with the ARR array. You're just working with it, adding to, removing from, 
checking it, whatever. And then eventually you need to clear it. So you do this type of thing with it. That works fine. There's no problem there. We can go ahead and do that without any problems. Where we run into issues with this method of clearing out arrays is if at some point we create a second reference to that array. Doing something like this. So here we've created a second reference. Now before we clear that out, I'm going to comment that out just to show you something really quick. So we have our, our reference, copy ARR. And we can see by looking at copy ARR that it shows the same thing. Now if we go ahead and add an element to either array, to ARR or copy ARR. Let's just add uh, 85, 85. You'll notice that if we display copy ARR, we see that 85. And if we display ARR, we see that 85. And that's because basically these are references. These contain a reference to the array in memory. And so when we set copy ARR equal to ARR, it basically just sets it to the same reference. So they're referencing the same place. So as we change one, it changes the other because they're pointing to the same array. Well, that might give you a clue why this method of clearing arrays could be a problem. Let's see what happens when we clear this array. See if it clears both our copy and the one we started with. So we'll save that. And we can see that ARR is now empty, nothing in it. What about copy ARR? It is not. So why does that happen? Why is this to have values in it and this one doesn't? Well, let me explain that. Basically what we've done here is right now this one and this one point to the same memory location, point to the same array. Well, right here we're declaring a new array and we're assigning its reference to ARR. So now they're no longer pointing to the same array. And if we wanted to clear out both of those, this would not be the method to use. If we want to clear out both, we would use the length method. Let's just go ahead and take a look at that. So we'll save that. As we can see, ARR is empty. Let's take a look at copy. ARR and it too is empty. The difference being we're modifying the array that both ARR and copy ARR are pointing to. So we're modifying that array. The same thing we did when we added an element to it. And so in that case, both of them are changed. Where in this situation, we're declaring a new array. And so we get results that we may not expect. All right, I hope that was helpful for some of you. And I'd appreciate hitting the like button. Or if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. And also remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.